Hello everyone and welcome to the next episode. Today we'll take a look about microservices in Node.js and we'll build some services and I will show you and tell you more about it. First of all, we'll, some, we'll have a few principles that we have and should follow when we are talking about microservices. First is single responsibility principle. I will tell you after all in our example how it's working. Bar built for business capabilities, isolations and data isolations as well. So first of all, when we know four rules, there are much more, we will just write down some code and we'll need to create two files. First will be user service, service Node.js, and the next file should be, for example, product service Node.js. Okay, also, when we are building our application, we'll need to do npm init-y. Okay, right now, the next thing that we have to do is npm install express to handle our routes in easy way, of course. And of course, of course, when we just finish, when you just done everything, we should go to user service right there. So first of all, what we should do is to get the ex express application. So require express as always. Also, we need to create our application express and be able to, for example, parsing application, I mean, JSON file. Okay, so express, express, yes, JSON. And the last thing will not connect to database. To go briefly with that, we'll simulate a database with some kind of array. So cons users equals, and first will be, first user will be ID, for example, one, name should be John and the second user will be ID2 with name Brian okay and right now we'll just create some endpoints that will get the users for us so app.get slash users we don't connect to database so we don't have to make it asynchronously we can do that in the normal way so rest and send, and we'll send the users to the our client. And the next thing that we'll need to, to get the user that we have inside our folder. So we'll just go there, users, and we'll pass ID that we'll just got that param, I mean that ID, through our link. Okay, request response. And right now, and right there, we'll need to create user, users.find, and we'll find user, user.id, that equals, and we'll have to parse to integer our request, params.id, because we'll just get there a string, as you, and that string will just convert to integer and change and check if our integer here, so number, is equal to the number over here. Also, we if we don't have we don't have the user, we will return response to status 404. And for example, send user does not exist or something go wrong. If everything's okay, we find that user. So Rest that send and user. And the last thing that we'll need to do there is app.listen. And we'll listen, for example, in 3001, because we'll just have two services that will run in the same moment. And user service service is running. Okay, we'll split it. Note. Or so we'll need user, sorry, user service.js. And as you can see, 
our service with user is running correctly. Right now, we'll need a second service that we'll just pr produce here. So cons express, as we do in the same way, we'll just copy and paste the three lines because we'll just need them here. Also, we'll create some database. This will be the same way in, uh, as we do before. So we'll create some array, ID one, name, product one, and user ID, for example, will be one. Also, ID two, name, product two, and user ID, it will be also, for example, two or one. We can just create whole products will contain the same user ID as there. Okay, and we'll just get an endpoint to get everything as we just got before. So products, we'll just request, whoa, request and response. And right there, res.send, and we'll send the products. So our list over here. And the same way that we create over here. So with our users, we'll just need products, change it there. Also, every user that we just created, we'll just create product. Right there, we'll just go through the product. Let's find. And of course, we can just change it instead of U to P and P over there. And everything is changed correctly. Also, we need to listen at our port and console.log product service is running. Save it. Right there, we'll just create get the node, node, product, service, that's JS, and it's running. Whenever we'll just delete or make some typos, we'll just uh, make some errors, that product service will run correctly still, because right now I only changed the uh, data over here, but whenever you will change and test it, inside, for example, Postman or inside your browser, everything will work separately. So as I said at the very beginning, there are some rules that we right there just mention and use. First of all, is that single responsible principle. So the, in the example that we just provide, we have two services. First is one for user management, so user service, and the other is for product management, so product service. Each service is res responsible for single aspect of the overall application. If we'll build the bigger application, each of them will separately, for example, work for one of the single responsibility, and that's why we are talking about single responsibility principle. The next thing that we have is to build for business capabilities. And uh, in our example, the user service handles user related operations. For example, like creating user, but right now we only retrieving users and specific user also right there. Also in the product, it's in the same way. So product service handles product related operations, like for example, retrieving, also we can add creating or anything we would like to deleting product, whatever we would like to have. Also, when you are talking about microservices, it's, you don't have to use specific one languages because we can use Java and for example, no JavaScript over here there will be okay because they are working on their own way. They've got some kind of 
points that way they stick together. For example, we can point, point that ID and user ID, that the overall application will connect that to data. But, but that's very important for the isolations that we go through all of them because you now can imagine some kind of example where, for example, our user service just go down and we don't have our user services and we've got a problem because in the normal application, whenever we will not write the micro services, we'll have an error and our application will go down in the microservices so it will help us and prevent from error okay user service will not working but still we will see for example products our page should connect to that service and everything will work correctly and that's the point the third point so isolations so whenever one gets an error the another one for example when user get error product works when product gets error user still works if they don't have errors inside of the microservice and the last thing that we just created over here is data is isolations of course when we are talking about normal application you will connect for example to sql database mongodb or whatever you would like to postgres you will be able to connect for the separate database that got for example some kind of stitches in some in the calculation in another microservice but to set up the complete microservice as i mentioned you need the user service and product service would keep their own database so our database right now is product and the product and the user is the another database that's it's shown over here it's the key very key principle of microservice microservices because it's also handling us and defending from some kind of errors that can occur in our application so that will be all in that episode I hope you enjoyed. Well, I know I've talked more than right, but it's about talking and understanding the basics of microservices and why they can be very useful when we are talking about bigger applications. So I hope you enjoy it. If yes, leave a like, subscribe, and write down write down some comments. See you at the next episode. If you have any questions and ideas, leave the comments below. And have a good day. Bye.